Pilot Topics is sponsored by AVTutorials.com. They offer interactive, easy-to-learn pilot training for Windows, Mac, and iPad. Now, let's join Steve and Russ. Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics, episode number two. I'm Steve, an airline pilot, flight instructor, flight engineer, previous examiner, and an A&P mechanic. I'm joined today by my brother, Russ, who always has good questions about flying. So let's get right to it. Russ, fire away. Okay, so Steve, what is controlled airspace? Uh, controlled airspace, that is a confusing thing about a pilot's. It is a generic term that covers the different classifications of airspace, which we're talking about class A, B, C, D, and E airspace. Air traffic control service is provided to IFR flights and to some VFR flights, depending on the airspace classification. Many pilots tend to think that they're talking to a controller, and if so, then that's controlled airspace, but that's not true. Again, it's just a generic term. So what is uncontrolled airspace? It's class G airspace. If we state it differently, it's the airspace that is not A, B, C, D, or E. Okay, so why does a pilot need to know the difference? Well, it deals with the complexity or the density of aircraft movements, uh, the nature of the operations conducted within a certain type of airspace, uh, even the level of safety required and the national and public interest. And there are other factors, too, such as cloud clearance and visibility re requirements that pilots have to maintain. In other words, basic VFR minimums are not the same everywhere. They vary depending on the type of airspace that you're in. So why, again, does a pilot need to know the difference between controlled and uncontrolled airspace? It is confusing. The key thing to remember here is that these are just generic terms. It's entirely possible to be in controlled airspace and never even speak to an air traffic controller. The takeaway is that each type of airspace has operational requirements and that uncontrolled, which is class G again, provides the greatest degree of leniency with operations. You know, some pilots have termed class G as go for it, as in G stands for go for it, which, <laughs> which implies that you can do whatever you want, but that's not true. Class G's go for it environment does mean that flight requirements are the least stringent of all the classes, however. So when will I be talking to a controller in controlled airspace? As a rule of thumb, you're going to be talking to a controller when you're in class A, B, C, and D airspace. If you're in class E airspace, you might or might not be talking to a controller. It depends on what operations you're conducting, whether you're IFR or VFR and other factors. It's a lengthy discussion, uh, more suitable for, for a later conversation. So if I'm in controlled airspace, which you said is class A, B, C, D, or E, and I'm talking to a controller, does that mean that they can see me on the radar? Well, now you're talking about a different subject, and that's radar coverage. Depending on the geographical location and the type of airspace, radar coverage might or might not be provided. It simply depends. In a radar environment, when a controller can see you, they'll inform you radar contact. Likewise, if they lose radar contact with you, they'll state radar contact lost. In some cases, they might even terminate radar services, such as if you're VFR and leave the boundary of Class C airspace, and in that situation, they'll state radar service terminated. Well, why would I want to talk to a controller while in controlled airspace? First, if you're IFR, you don't have a choice. The, okay. good, the good news is that ATC will provide standard separation to all aircraft operating IFR in controlled airspace. Second, if you're VFR, you'll benefit from receiving traffic advisories and safety alerts such as terrain and obstacle alerts. Of course, this hinges on whether you're in radar contact, and it also depends on if the controller can fit you into his or her workload. I see. Well, this helps clarify that controlled airspace doesn't mean you're talking to a controller and that radar service found in controlled airspace. Yeah, that's right. You know, the best source of information regarding airspace is really the Aeronautical Information Manual, which is a free download on the FAA's website. And I really urge all pilots to read through that section. 
There's a whole lot of information. It is complicated, but pilots need to know this. And so that's it. Okay. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for listening. I guess that wraps it up, and hopefully we'll see you on the next episode. Visit avtutorials.com for a free two-hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Remember to listen next week, and happy flying! <laughs>